Books and reading, building a reading culture. People, people often ask how to get children to read books. Children are very impressionable and easily copy what the adults around them do. I encountered an eight-year-old boy who was immersed in the leader who had no title. Adults do not find Robin Sharma's books easy to read. But this young man had been around readers from birth. It captivated him. What other ways would you motivate a young one to read? Let us think about it. Reading unlocks creativity and critical thinking. As a young child, I'd swum in the Danube through books. I read several accounts of World War II, and presently I'm devouring Leningrad, the tale of a city under siege, 1941 to 1944, by Anna Reed. I took a trip to Russia several years back, and I often felt the battlefield come alive as I rode the train down the countryside. When I got to St. Petersburg, formerly called Leningrad, it felt familiar. Often people ask me, how is it that someone can read 100 books in a year while they are struggling with two? Most times we need to begin and dive into any book that is our focus. Alexandre Domas's Count of Monte Cristo is over 1,200 pages. But once you bite in, you are stuck. It is compelling. The volume might discourage you, but the content will hold you. Different lifestyles and interests might determine what you read, how you read, and even where and when you read. I have found reading while commuting is a great use of time. 20 pages a day translates to 600 pages a month. That is easily, easily the volume of two books. The easy way to get children to read is for their parents or guardians to read and be seen reading. A habit of reading with them before they go to bed will go a long way to enforce it in their subconscious to read. Some of the avid readers I know cannot imagine going for an extended period without reading or buying books. Once this habit is formed, it sticks. It is imperative to ensure children have access to the proper books for their age grade. Ejimai Olayemi, an author, talked about our responsibility to produce local children picture books, story books, that depict our culture using the likeness of our children on this program a few weeks ago. Children will need guardians as books help form them. I said earlier that reading is a harbinger of critical and creative thinking. Many people who refuse to read live in a bubble, unable to appreciate and respect the diverse perspectives that the world offers. A reader is less likely to be intolerant. Often, you hear people wonder if Nigerian politicians read. But they do read a lot. Some of the tactics and techniques that have helped them to remain relevant are honed from the pages of books. Robert Greene's 48 Laws of Power and The Prince by Niccolo Machiavelli are books whose theme is manipulation. It is the followers that do not read enough to be able to identify and counter the this pattern of behavior. Radicalism and extremism also thrive with constricting access to knowledge. And you know, books are a rich source of this. When an, when an individual reads wide, they are very likely to at least be tolerant of diverse ideologies and mindsets. Adults need to develop a reading, adults who need to develop a reading habit should join book clubs. This book Clubs encourage members to read diverse topics and genres of books regularly. I've been a member of the Book Club Lagos for six years, and it has exposed me to more books, especially by Nigerian authors. Let us promote reading and books as a way of life. It should be our culture. Well, I think, I, I think I'm, I'm, this is hitting me very heavily, 
very hard. I used to I used to read. I used to read. I recall there was a time I was almost like reading two books in a week. But my mobile phone is the biggest distraction. Distraction. I mean, before I go from Twitter, I from Twitter to Instagram, I'm probably I hardly even go to Facebook. Twitter and Instagram has given me so much to do. So I think I'm realizing that, you know, maybe my, even my, my attention span has drastically short. reduced. Mm -hmm. Well, one thing you said that hits me is the fact that children are impressionable. Because for me, I'm very, becoming very intentional with my, with my child. So now it's hitting me that I need to start reading for him to see me reading. That for me is what I'm taking out of here. But me, I'm guilty as charged. I've <laughs> stopped. I'm not reading like I used to read before. You know. I, I think another important thing is that parents should study the learning pattern of their children. Exactly. And I use myself as an example. I graduated top of my class and I'm very versatile, but I don't like reading books, right? Because over time I've studied myself and I've understood that I learn better through audios or videos, not necessarily reading books. So you discover that there are applications that can give you the ability to read a whole book just by listening to those books. So different learning patterns will decide people's habits to reading. Reading is important, but if your child's learning pattern is that of pictures, images, and voices, no matter what you do, that child would struggle to read you know, with the normal books. Or the child can decide to pretend, okay, daddy said I should read, <laughs> let me read. So I think parents should also play a proactive role in this. Find out, okay, this is my child. How can this child better learn? Give them example. Okay, tell them to read, tell them to listen to audio, listen to videos, and watch how it works out. I think it is going to be a very effective. Because me, personally, I can't say I've finished any book. I can't say I've finished any book, right? <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not behind, so it's very important. But you I'm, listen to a book. I listen yeah. to okay, a book, so but I don't read like... So it, it's part of it. Really. Let, let, maybe let's hear from Mr. Samson. Samson. He's in a very sane environment. <laughs> he probably reads a lot. I mean, the noisy legends can even distract from reading. Mr. Samson, how okay, do you so, with reading? Uh, I used to read a lot. Okay. I mean, I used to read a lot of motivational books that actually got me here in the first instance. It was bulk of what I started my organization with, uh, started to run my business. And the models I use in running my ventures and businesses back in Nigeria as of today were knowledge and skills I picked from books and materials. But in recent time, technology has actually uh, reduced uh, reading physical books to uh, graphical represented, graphically represented articles via uh, social media. So it depends on the volume, of, the type of content you digest when you are on social media. Like uh, I do Twitter a lot. In fact, that's my first uh, social media platform early in the morning. And I do that for about two hours early in the morning. Mm -hmm. And you ask yourself, what are the content I digest? I read, there are people I follow that has very good uh, content that you read early morning, they, they had value to you, they impact you, you learn a lot. Someone like Samadhi Emi is someone you always comes with fantastic articles that you can read. And so when you do that, you continue to still get the value that you will have gotten if you were actually reading physical books. But for, just like you have mentioned that for children's sake and the impressions you need to create to ensure that you encourage them and into inculcating really good reading habits. Because yeah, while I was growing up, I actually had these reading habits and I used to read a lot. So if they're also gonna do the same, I need to make sure I reduce their timing with cartoons and all those things to actually developing attitude calmness to be able to read and understand content, digest content through reading or through hearing. So it's good that uh, once in a while, if, if, you, if, you, are, if you have the time, always devote time to, to digest good content. I know a lot of white people here do a lot of reading. And in fact, I tell you, that is, they don't have other things they do other than to read. Uh, yeah. I, I'd like to say something. I'm a very traditional yeah. person. So I'm attracted to the physical book. And uh, I'm trying to find out whether there's an alternative to read. There isn't. Uh, 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 even in terms of making impression, that is what makes impression. 
I am I'm rather lucky because um, I took to reading because of boredom. I was living alone with my grandmother, and there was a avalanche of book in her, books in her house. And so I could just go and read up things that I have no idea about. And I read and read again, and I still don't understand, but I know I've read it. So, mm -hmm. so, 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 so th there was a day I was left in the car with my daughter, and I was reading. I didn't interact with her, I was just reading. Then she looked for something. Of course, there will always be books in the car. So she looked for something, she picked it. <laughs> it was beyond, it was above her age. The book is prophecy. <laughs> 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 so she picked it and started reading it. So when the mom came back, she complained that I didn't interact with her. But she picked a book and she doesn't understand, or she didn't understand whatever it is they were saying in the book. But she had to read in order to keep her own time to. So, so uh, 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 reading has no alternative. And reading books, I must tell you, has no alternative, except you have a difficulty, uh, like dyslexia, being able to read. But because it's, it broadens your mind, and there is, there is another creative part of your brain that is switched on the moment you pick a book and you read. And uh, 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 you know, somebody said that learning, which comes by reading, uh, 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 keeps exposing your ignorance. Mm. And, mm -hmm. and, 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 mm. And it is, it is important that we read. I'm lucky, I would say, mm -hmm. that the people I grew up with, the person I work with, my direct boss, is an avid reader. I do not compete with him because I don't think I can match him. But you see people so around I you that, that to, can, yeah. and of course I'm a lawyer, so I need to read. You know, something, to something again in the Nigerian setting, let me contextualize it. The reason a lot of young people are not reading now is that there isn't much of an incentive to study. This is why we grew up hearing or learning that education is the key. But you spend time and years studying, acquiring all relevant certifications, and you get into a system or a labor market that does not make enough provision for people who have managed to study. You see a lot of first-class graduates who are jobless. And in many cases, even to get a job, it's not about what you know or what you can do, but about who knows you. Yeah, yes, but if I can also paint this picture, mm -hmm. Um, I've always believed that when you prepare, there's a point that preparation will meet, will meet opportunity. opportunity yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when we read, when we acquire knowledge, when we try to get to know things, when we try to understand uh, why people are like this, why, when, we, when, when we get to a state where we can ask so many why questions, we will get to a point that when opportunities come, we'll be able to slide in. But now, what now happens to a lot of people is that they don't do the things They're that prepare them, them for yeah. those opportunities. So, 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 so to, to add to that yeah. is, you see, the purpose of reading, the core of reading is knowledge. And knowledge edifies. The Bible says my people die for, for lack, lack of, of knowledge. knowledge. Ignorance kills faster than anything. Mm -hmm. Now, see, the president once said people should take bleach to fight COVID. Ignorant people would have taken it. So, so, so knowledge is, is, I'm sure you would have seen a lot of the arrogance of ignorance that is demonstrated on social media. But mm -hmm. what restrains you from responding is where do you start? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, how do I? <laughs> we have now come to the end of this week's episode of The Advocate. I hope you'll pick a book to read today. However, The Advocacy continues on our social media platform on Facebook. Plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate ng, or on Twitter and Instagram at plus TV Africa, hashtag the advocate ng. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plus TV Africa.com forward slash the advocate ng. Don't forget to sus subscribe to our YouTube channel, plus TV Africa. Till next week, same time on this station. Let's keep advocating for a better society. Five. five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually worked. I don't think that 
any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What well, I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.